This modern day record player lets you wave an album cover on top of the wooden box and automatically starts playing the album. The record player uses radio frequency identification, the same technology in your credit card when you tap to pay, and in access cards you scan to enter restricted buildings. This technology usually involves RFID chips, such as the chip in your credit card, and an RFID scanner, such as the debit machine, that can read the values of the card and perform an action accordingly. In this project, the RFID scanner is mounted inside the wooden box and all the vinyls have an RFID sticker that can be tapped on the box where the scanner is located to switch the album. Inside the box, the RFID scanner is wired to a Raspberry Pi, which is running a Python program that switches the song based on the value it reads from the scanner. Depending on the sticker value that is scanned, the corresponding album is played through the Spotify API. The Spotify API can play any song or album on Spotify, including your daily mix or any of your curated playlists, such as your pop mix, your R&B mix, or any others. To start, we'll need to take our RFID scanner module and solder header pins onto it. These pins will allow us to connect wires from the scanner to the Raspberry Pi. So once you've soldered the pins, this is what it should look like. And next we'll be taking our Raspberry Pi and connecting the two together. To connect them together, we'll be using these DuPont cables that have these rectangular blocks on both sides to allow us to connect the pins together. I'll link this diagram in the description below and I highly recommend printing it out. This shows the mapping for the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi and tells us what their descriptions are so that we know which pins to connect together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the SDA pin on the RFID module to the GPIO pin 8 on the Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to connect the SCK pin on the RFID module to GPIO pin 11 on the Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to connect the MOSI pin on the RFID module and we're going to connect that to GPIO pin 10 on the Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to take another cable and connect the MISO pin on the RFID module and connect that to GPIO pin 9 on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to skip the next pin on the RFID module, the IRQ pin, and we're going to go to ground and we're going to connect the ground pin on the RFID module and connect that to ground on the Raspberry Pi. Then we're going to take another cable and connect the RST pin on the RFID module and connect that to GPIO pin 23 on the Raspberry Pi. Next, we're going to take the 3.3V pin on the RFID module and connect that to power on the Raspberry Pi. So now that everything was connected together, I put it into the box using some 3D printed parts to help mount everything. And then we're just going to connect it, the Raspberry Pi to power. So I just got a Raspberry Pi power supply and connected that to the Pi. I also got some speakers and I found USB powered speakers, that way there was one less thing I had to plug into the outlet. And then I plugged in the speakers into the headphone jack of the Raspberry Pi. And we were pretty much done all of the hardware and all of the wiring and before we get into programming I'll just tell you a little bit about how I created the vinyls. So basically I just um, used some cardstock and printed the album covers for the different albums that I wanted. And then I took these RFID stickers that I bought from Amazon 
and I just taped one sticker to 3D printed records that I created to fit the little cardstock album covers that I made. And that was pretty much how I made these vinyls. So here's another one that you can see is um, just has like the songs on the back and the RFID sticker taped onto the record. And that was pretty much it. Now let's get into the programming. Now let's get into the software aspect of this tutorial. I'll basically be showing you how to download everything, how to install everything, and how to get your um, modern day record player all set up. I've just reinstalled Raspberry Pi OS. I have the newest version right now, which is Bullseye, um, but this does also work on Buster. I've tested it out on both. Um, and yeah, so I've basically reinstalled it. That way we're both starting in the same spot. The other thing I want to say too is that I do have a GitHub repo and a blog and I'll put both of those in the description. I've in very much detail outlined everything that you have to follow, like all of these steps that I'll be showing in the video. So I really recommend looking through those and um, that way you can like copy and paste the code. Um, you're able to supplement this video with the written material as well. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that the blog and the GitHub repo will tell you to do is to open a terminal window. Um, and the first thing that we want to do is to update our Pi and upgrade it just to make sure that it is running the latest software. So the first command you're going to type is sudo apt-get update. And since this is a fresh install right now, there shouldn't be a lot to update, but yours might take long if you have an older OS. So um, just be patient and let that run for both of these commands. So again, this one shouldn't take me too long, but there we go. Yeah. All right, so the next thing that you wanna do is, um, so what we're gonna do is in order to be able to use the RFID module with the Raspberry Pi, we have to enable SPI in the Pi's config options. So what that means, we're gonna open the terminal window and we're gonna type sudo raspy dash config. And it's gonna open this terminal window. You're gonna to go to interfacing options or interface options right there. And then you're going to go to SPI. And then it's going to say, would you like it to be enabled? You're going to say yes. And it says it's enabled, say OK. And then we're going to go down. So once you get to this bottom one with the down arrow, you have to click the right arrow to go to select and then go to finish and then click enter. OK, so now we want to restart our Pi and we're going to type sudo reboot and that'll reboot our Raspberry Pi. All right, so now that our Raspberry Pi has finished rebooting, we are going to um, install some packages and libraries before we can use Python to read the RFID tags. So we're gonna again, open a terminal window and we're gonna install some packages and libraries. So the first thing you're gonna type is sudo apt-get install python3-dev python3-pip and click enter. Okay, so um, for me, because I'm on the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, it says that they're already installed and that's fine, but for you it might install. So uh, definitely make sure that you do type all of these to make sure that you have them. So the next one we're gonna type is sudo ins pip3 install spydev. And I think that one's already pre-installed as well. Uh, we'll just let that load. Yep, so it's already installed. And then the last one that you're gonna type is sudo pip3 install mfrc522 all right so now we can start interacting with the rfid scanner um, we're going to write some python code that will allow us to read rfid tags so the next thing that we're going to do is install firefox we're going to need a web browser later on and i found that firefox works best on this new raspberry pi os so I'm going to type sudo apt install Firefox ESR, but you don't have to do this. You can use um, Chrome or whatever other uh, browser you want. All right. So now that that has installed, I'm going to exit out of there and I'm going to click here to open my folders. I'm going to click on documents and then I'm going to right click and click on new folder and I'm going to call it RFID Spotify and click OK. And in that folder, we're going to right click new file and we're going to call it read.py. And then we're going to right click on read.py and we're going to click on open with, go to programming and then oop, 
programming Thonny Python IDE. So Thonny is a Python IDE that comes pre-installed on your Raspberry Pi and lets you write and run Python code. Right, so we're gonna have that open, but before we continue, we actually need the code that we're gonna write. And if you go to Firefox or whatever internet browser you wanna use, uh, we're gonna go to the GitHub repo where I actually have the code so that we can copy it. All right, so the GitHub repo, you're gonna type github.com slash tbwadi slash Spotify dash RFID dash record player. It'll also be in the description. And as of right now, it's private, but as of the time of posting this video, it will be public and it will be in the description. So you can um, open this up. The first one that we're gonna use is called read.py. So you're gonna click on that. And what this code does, it's very simple code. It will um, import the libraries that are needed to read an RFID card. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna wait for you to scan an RFID sticker or a card. And then once you scan it, it'll assign it to this variable called ID and then it'll print whatever that ID is. So it'll scan the ID and then it'll say the ID for this card is and return that ID. So what we're gonna do is if you actually click on raw, we can copy this really easily. And then we're gonna go back to Thonny where we have a read.py file and we're just gonna paste that code. And we're gonna save, so control S to save or you can click here and then we're gonna run that. So you see here it says waiting for you to scan an RFID sticker slash card. So I'm actually going to go to my RFID scanner and scan a card and then we'll see what it does. So you can see now it tells us the ID for this card is and it gives us the ID. So this shows that it's working right now and also it shows that um, or it shows me what the ID is for that card. So that later on in the tutorial when I want to um, play a song when that card is scanned, I know which value to use in that part of the code. But uh, we'll get there, so don't worry if that doesn't make sense right now. So the next part is the Spotify integration. We're going to make the Raspberry Pi a Spotify Connect device, which means that we're going to make it its own device that we can play songs through, um, its own device that we can like send API requests to later on in the tutorial. Um, so yeah, that's going to be our first step. All right, so we're gonna be using a library called Raspotify that does all of this for us. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna search up Raspotify and click enter. And we're gonna go to that GitHub repo and there should be one line. So we're gonna copy that line and then we are going to paste it in our terminal and click enter. And that's gonna install Raspotify for us. All right, so now that that has installed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Spotify on like your MacBook or your Windows or your phone. So basically anything that's not your Raspberry Pi. And what you wanna do, so I'm gonna actually just pull up this window. This is from my MacBook. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this Spotify Connect icon. And now you can see that we have Raz Spotify there. So our Raspberry Pi has already just become a Spotify Connect device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click on that to connect to it and now I'm going to connect speakers to my Pi so I actually already have some just connected and I'm going to try to play a song and it should play through the Raspberry Pi all right so I've just tested it and it is working it's playing through my Raspberry Pi so now I can just move that back and now we're back to the Raspberry Pi so we know that that's working which is good Okay, so at this point, we have the code that allows us to scan and read RFID stickers, and we are able to play Spotify through our Raspberry Pi. The last piece of the puzzle is using the Spotify API to control the music that plays on the Pi based on those RFID values. So first, we have to do some quick setup to get some tokens from Spotify that will allow us to access their API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to developer.spotify.com. I'm going to go to dashboard right here and if you scroll down there's a login button so I'm going to sign in with my Spotify premium account you do need premium for this all right so now we're at this dashboard and what you're going to do is you're going to click on create an app so I'm going to call this um, demo but you can call it anything you want and then you have to give it a description so I'm going to say YouTube demo for Spotify record player. I'm going to click I understand and agree and click create.
All right, so now it gives us an app. Um, we're gonna click on edit settings. So you're gonna go here where it says redirect URIs and you're gonna put localhost 888 slash callback. And then the other one you're gonna add is HTTP. localhost eighty eighty, and we're going to add that and click save okay so the data has been saved and now from the dashboard we want to note down a couple things so we want to note down the client id the client secret um, because we're going to be using those in a later step or you can just keep your dashboard open and then just copy and paste it when you need it. Okay, so now we have to find the device ID of our Raspberry Pi. So since we made it a Spotify Connect device, we have to find its Spotify device ID. And that's like the device that we'll know to send songs to and to make API requests to. So what we're going to do is we're going to click add here and we're going to go to HTTPS slash slash um, developer.spotify.com slash console slash get dash users dash available dash devices and click enter okay and then we're going to click get token when that page loads up we're going to check the required scopes for the endpoint so anything under this required scopes we're going to check it and click request token Okay, so now it's going to reload the page. We're going to click on try it. And that's going to make an API call and get the list of Spotify devices on the home network. So if I go down, we can see um, we have my Mac mini and then we also have my uh, Raz Spotify, the Raspberry Pi. So if you don't see the Raspberry Pi here, so let's say I just saw my Mac mini. If you don't see the Raspberry Pi, you want to go on your computer or your phone and you just want to reconnect to the raspberry pi here and then you're going to go back and try the call again and then that should bring up your raspberry pi device all right so i'm going to copy that id because i'm going to need it and actually i'll just keep this window open as well so that way i have the id here and then i have the client id and the client secret here so i have everything i need right now so now we're going to use Python to control Spotify. We're going to install the Spotify library, which lets us access the Spotify web API using Python. So I'm going to just minimize my Firefox. I'm going to clear this terminal and I'm going to type sudo pip install Spotify. Okay, so it's successfully installed and just make sure that you're using sudo pip and not sudo pip3 for this. So now we're going to open this folder and we're going to go back to our documents where we have this RFID Spotify and we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it Spotify test.py and we're going to open that with Thonny. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to GitHub. So back to my GitHub repo and I'm going to click on Spotify test.py and I'll click raw and I'm going to copy that. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to Thonny up here and I'm going to paste. So this code will um, interact with the Spotify API to send or like to automatically start playing a song on our Raspberry Pi. So there's a couple things that we have to modify about this code before we can run it. The first one is the device ID. So we're going to go back to Firefox where we made that API call and we're going to copy that ID for the spot or for the Ras Spotify Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to copy that, go into Thonny, and then you're just going to paste it here and make sure that you keep the quotes for this. And then the client ID, so I'm going to go back to here and go back to my dashboard and get the client ID. And paste that. 
And then we need the client secret. So I'm going to go back here. And get the client secret and then go back. And paste that. So now we've pasted everything. We have our device ID, client ID, client secret, and you can see these variables are used throughout the code. So the client ID is used here to authenticate who we are. Um, and then the device ID is used in this function where we transfer the playback. So if let's say your phone is the current active device, we're gonna transfer the playback to the Raspberry Pi. Um, so that's why we needed the device ID there. Um, and then we have this function here that starts playback. So this one will actually start um, playing our track. And right now I have this uh, track or I have this um, Spotify song, but you can actually swap this for a different song and I'll show you how to do that. But just to start and I'm going to run. And that should open up this page and it tells you, um, you agree that the app that we created will be able to view your Spotify account data, view your activity, take actions. So control Spotify, so basically you're giving it permission to let you use the API to control your Spotify. So now we have authentication status successful. It actually scared me because it started playing the song. Um, yeah, because right now it did the authentication. It was successful, so it started playing. So I'm going to just turn that up so you can hear. Okay. So you can see here that we're playing the song at this URI, but um, you can actually choose which song you want to play. So you're going to open up Spotify on like your computer or your phone. And then uh, if you click on a song and click on these three dots and click share, you can copy the song link for that song. Um, and then and then I'm going to paste that and the URI is whatever is between here. So it's basically what's after the track slash and before this question mark. So if you actually go to the GitHub, then there's uh, more details on how you can play an album instead of a song and um, just some more information. So at this point, we have Python code that reads an RFID value and we have Python code that uses the Spotify API to play music. We just have to combine these together to create the code for our music player that will play Spotify based on the RFID values. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our RFID Spotify folder. We're going to create a new file and this will actually be the file that is our final Python file that we'll use for this record player. And we're going to call it player.py. And I'm going to right click, open that with Bonnie. So there it is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to GitHub. And we're gonna get, we're gonna go back to the Spotify RFID record player and we're gonna get the file called player.py. We're gonna click on raw and just copy that whole thing. And we're gonna go back to Thani and we're gonna paste that. So again, there's a couple things that we have to modify. First is device ID, client ID, and client secret. Um, we can just get those from this file because they'll be the same. So let's just copy that there. There we go. Um, and then let's see, what else do we have to change? So if we scroll down, we'll see here that basically we have um, an if statement that says, if the ID of the RFID card is X, then we're gonna play this song. Otherwise, if it's this, then we're gonna play this song. So basically this code is already pretty much written for you. Um, and what it'll do is it'll wait for you to scan a card and based on the value of that card, it will um, play that specific song. So now what we're going to do um, is we are going to go back to our read.py and we're going to take one of our RFID stickers. So I'm going to run this program. It's going to say waiting for you to scan an RFID sticker or a card. I'm going to scan one. So it says the ID for the card is this. So I'm going to take that ID. I'm going to copy it, go back to player. And I'm going to say, if the ID is the one that we just scanned, then I want to play this track, but you can change this to be whatever track that you want. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to go back here. We're going to scan another ID. So the one that I just scanned is this one. And we're going to say, so if we go here, so we're saying if the ID is the first one that we scanned, we're going to play this song. Else if the ID is the second one that we scanned, we're going to play this other song or this album. And then here it says there's a comment that says continue adding as many else ifs for songs or albums that you want to play. So let's say we wanted to do a third one. We just copy this code block. And we're just going to go here and paste that. And with Python, the indenting is super important. So you can't have your other one starting here, for example. They have to be aligned. Um, and yeah, so we can go scan another card. So let me go do that. I'll scan another card. I believe no i think i just scanned the same one let me scan another one okay so we've just scanned another one and i'm gonna copy that go to the player and then just change that id and then i can change this album if i want put in a different uri um i'll just keep it for now and there we go so we're gonna save that and we're gonna try running it and see what happens so i'm gonna run that And maybe actually let me add a little piece of code that I'll update in GitHub, but um, let's see. So it'll say, so I'm going to stop the code. Waiting for card scan or waiting for uh, record scan. Okay, that's better. So let's run that so that we're actually... Okay, don't worry about this warning, it's fine. Um, so it's just a warning, it's okay. So it says waiting for a record scan, we're gonna scan one of our records. So I've actually had to change some of these tracks and just make sure that they're all copyright free songs so that way I can demonstrate them playing and post it on YouTube. So um, I'm basically, so I just played it, it says waiting for a record scan and I'm gonna scan my first card and you should hear the song start to play. And now I'm going to switch the song. Okay, so I just turned the volume down. So that's basically the gist of it. Um, so you can see now we have um, the songs playing based on the different IDs. So you can just keep adding else if statements with the different songs or the albums that you want to play. Um, and I guess uh, there's just one kind of final step to this is um, right now the way that you're running this program is to uh, like open up your documents folder and go to player.py and then click this run button and then scan your cards but ideally you want to actually add it to the cron tab of the raspberry pi which would make it um which would make this python program run by default and or sorry it would make it run like on start of the raspberry pi and that way like as soon as you turn on the raspberry pi um you can scan the card and automatically just start playing any song so in the github repo and in the blog in the blog post, I will have a link to a really good Instructable that shows you how you can add this Python file to the cron tab and have it run on start of the Raspberry Pi booting up. I won't cover it here, um, but I do also just want to say one other thing is once you do that, um, you just want to make sure that whenever you turn on your Raspberry Pi that you go to Spotify and you just go to... So you want to make sure that like on a computer or a phone, you just want to make sure that you click on RAS Spotify and um, just for the first time, just because it has to be an active device for you to be able to send API calls to it. So if you haven't used it in a couple hours, it might like time out um, and scanning cards might not work. So if you're not using it, you have to re like activate it by going on a computer or phone and clicking on RAS Spotify. But as long as you're playing music on it, you don't actually have to do this. It's just for when it becomes inactive due to like not having used it for a couple hours, if that makes sense. And yeah, that's pretty much all it is for the tutorial. Feel free to like um, put any comments with anything you're having trouble with or anything that you need clarification on, and I'd be happy to help. Thank you all for watching.